around it's doing all this, this badness. From MySpace's point of view, you visited a profile, you then visited www.myspace.com, you then said you wanted to update your profile, and then you confirmed it, and then you added a friend. From MySpace's point of view, nothing bad happened. That's a perfectly logical sequence of events. It's perfectly valid. It, it might have looked a little suspicious that was happening about half a second <laughs> after each other's, but that's not their fault because I could have thrown in a JavaScript timer that said wait four seconds and then update their profile. So, I mean, it, it's really kind of tough. You're in a spot because from a server point of view, they don't know that something bad's happening. And from a browser point of view, you don't know something bad's happening. But believe me, and those red arrows I made, there's some bad stuff happening. So, so what you gonna do? Well, so I did not write the Sammy worm. I actually did have friends call me and say, did you do it? And I hadn't even heard about the worm. And I was like, what? Because I was actually out at TourCon 7 talking about using cross-site scripting in Ajax to, uh, to do really nasty stuff. And then a month later, this thing happened. And everyone assumed I wrote it, and I did not. Sammy did. Um, the, it's, but it's an excellent proof of concept how Ajax, even though Ajax is restricted, it's only allowed to talk back to the host it came from, I, I can still screw that host. I can still infect things. I can do all sorts of stuff. I can't leave the island, but I can infect everybody on that island. Um, it, it showed the, the web server can't tell the difference between the requests. Um, it also showed how JavaScript plus Ajax plus regexes means I can get through pretty much any complex login sequence you throw at me. Short of CAPTCHAs or two-factor authentication with a secure ID token, Ajax and JavaScript and regexes can get through it. And assuming I know the passwords or I, I can brute force them. Um, MySpace really lucked out because it, it wasn't anything nasty. It was, you know, some punk ass kid having fun. And the thing is how I used to be a punk ass kid who had a lot of fun, I, I can kind of relate. But it got bad pretty quick. And the badness that got pretty quick was the Yamaner worm. This was, it, it's kind of nasty to say whether this is a web virus or a worm because it, it had the potential to send emails to people outside of Yahoo, but it didn't. And that's simply because Yahoo had that functionality. It's a mail, I mean, their webmail is a mail client. But basically in June of 2006, it infected and took down the third largest web email provider, which is Yahoo. Uh, again, this should sound, you know, a nice little repetition to you. JavaScript plus Ajax equals bad. Um, it propagated, it had a JavaScript inside a message. You looked at the message. Uh, you know what, let's just look at the source code, because that's a lot easier. I did this this morning, so if you saw that, I apologize. So here was the actual message that was sent to the users. And I, I'm certainly not the first person to show you. This has been floating around the internet, very easy to find for months. So <laughs> Kevin, I'm not making a disclosure I shouldn't be making. Um, we got an image source, which is just saying, hey, here, it's just an HTML message. Hey, here's an image I wanted to include in my uh, email. When this image is done loading, uh, when this image that I specify in source is done loading, right here, on load, run this big block of JavaScript, which is about 3K of JavaScript. And right down here is where it starts. They wrote a little function called make request to kind of make stuff easier for them. It's right here, but basically, given a URL, it instantiates a, a uh, object, uh, an, an XML HTTP request object, which is how Ajax happens, and um, takes care of all the sending. So the first thing it did, it says, hey, um, once the virus loaded, it said, hey, contact Yahoo and ask for the address book. And when you're done, go talk to list contacts. So we go up here, and list contacts function spawns. It says, hey, if I did get a, the request back and the request was a 200, go ahead and extract, right here, this function, get IDs, extracts out all of their email addresses, and it stores it in ID list. It next says, make a request, and when you're done, to notice this, make a request to mail.yahoo compose and get, who? excuse me, uh, get crumb to call this function when you're done. Yahoo kind of had something similar to MySpace where they said, are you sure you want to send this message? They basically pushed down this little magical ticket they called a crumb as a variable name. And when you send the mail message, you actually had to give them that crumb. And then they would, uh, they'd actually send the message. So once I grabbed your address book, go grab the crumb. When you've gotten the crumb and you got back a 200 okay, go ahead, extract it. And now it said the, the contents was, this is a test. The subject of the email was new graphics site. Here's the URL we're gonna send to. We're gonna do a lot of nastiness. And then right here, the blind carbon copy list is all of the email addresses. So it made one giant email to everybody in your address book. 
And then once it was done sending this email to everybody in your address book, thus spreading the virus, it said alert contents is the file it wanted you to call. And then right down here, alert contents basically says, once you're done spreading the virus by emailing everybody who had a Yahoo address, go ahead and window.navigate, go send your, go send right here ID list, which is the address book, send the address book to www.v3.net. So not only did they propagate a worm, they then stole your address book to start selling, sending you spam, uh, which is a, a darn shame. This is actually a second variant. There was one, uh, it was right up here at the top. They actually tried to do a window.open and pop up some advertising, but they actually fat fingered it when they typed it. And they had www. or www, comma, some ad server.com. And so they weren't actually able to pop up advertising. So it's, it's kind of funny to find a typo in somebody's code. I kind of wanted to email them and be like, oh, yeah, you fat fingered this. I took the liberty of patching it for you. <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, okay, so here's the scary stuff. MySpace.com, Sammy screwing around. Yamanner virus, stealing addresses written specifically to harvest email addresses for spammers. Eight months to go from proof of concept to criminal enterprise. These guys are already using it. It's not punk kids or 13 year olds in Brazil just screwing with you, you know, which is what, I'm not picking on Brazil, it's just the Pearl guys, the Pearl.Santi was written by a Brazilian, 13 year old Brazilian dude. Uh, these aren't just kids screwing with you, these are criminals who realize that they can use cross-site scripting plus Ajax and take down very, very large sites. Um, uh, I probably should delete this. Yahoo shouldn't be all that ashamed. I mean, it is difficult to filter image, uh, but, the on load event is a pretty common, well-known way to execute scripts. They probably should have done a better job filtering it, but you know what you're gonna do. So, all right, you know, we kind of talked about state of the art. I got 15 minutes left. Why don't we talk about how to destroy the internet? Let's talk about how bad this stuff actually could get if it wasn't a 13-year-old Brazilian just screwing with you. All right, the Pearl.Santi were real examples. They both had very childish payloads. Uh, you know, Sammy is my hero and I defaced your site. Um, I actually wrote this part of the presentation, like I said, I presented it in January. This was before the Yamaner worm hit. So I'm gonna, ex I'm gonna propose two hypothetical and truly evil samples of extreme web, mag mag web, ah, web malware. The first one is the Schwagmo web worm, and the second one is the 1929 web virus. So Schwagmo is holy mother of God, we're screwed backwards. Because if I did it right, it would, it would be bad. Um, this would be a webworm that propagates from host to host, you know, moving from island to island, infecting you with multiple SQL injection vulnerabilities in different web apps. So I got a SQL injection vulnerability in PHPBB. I've got a SQL injection vulnerability in vBulletin. I'm using these to do remote command execution. Uh, it would propagate by using Google to locate new sites for one of the SQL injection vulns we know about. So I've got, let's say I got five vulnerabilities I know about. The first generation looks for vulnerabilities in the first site. The next generation, next site. And it just rotates. So I'm not just hitting one type, I'm hitting multiple types. So now you gotta wait for multiple vendors to fix the problem. Uh, the other thing we wanna do is we wanna mutate our search string so that we, can't, we avoid the bottleneck this pearl.santi worm had. So you know, Google just stopped returning results for that search string. I'm gonna keep changing my search string. So I'm gonna look, I'm, you know, all in URL, the modifier for Google, is very similar to the in URL modifier. I'm gonna start adding words to my search string that I know Google's gonna throw out anyway, like in, the, of. So the search string I'm sending keeps changing, but Google, it's returning the same results. Uh, there's, I, there's actually an algorithm to generate English words that you know, are proper English, they don't mean anything, or I could just access um, user local. So I could say, find me all the PHP, powered by PHPBB version 2.4 and kitty cat. Find me PHPBB v, you know, v5 and you know, doggy. And, and change their ordering, flip everything around. I can mutate this search string like no tomorrow and you won't be able to fingerprint it. Uh, if we don't get a results page, Google detected our search string, so randomly select a new search engine. I mean, MSN used to be not a very good search engine and it's pretty good now. It supports things like in URL, in title, some of these fun things you can do for Google hacking, the other search engines support. So, yeah, Google is not the only search engine. We all use it, we all probably think it is, but you know, in, in the cases when you're writing a worm, use other search engines, so they can't clamp you. So now I got multiple vulnerabilities that gotta be patched, and I got multiple search engines who have to stop all these permutations of attack strings that I'm using. Now this is the fun part. We're gonna mutate the virus source code. We're gonna have a polymorphic worm. 
and because we don't want you to write a signature on it. First of all, it's an interpreted script, so it's a lot easier for me to mutate it. I could just throw a new comment at the beginning. That'll mess up the MD5 past them. I could actually change the structure of the virus. Instead of having like a for loop, I could have a do while loop. Instead of having an if then else tree, I could use a switch case statement. So I could actually change the structure, the source code of the virus, but it'll still execute and do the exact same thing. I could encrypt it, which I mean has been in, around with polymorphic webware or polymorphic viruses since like the er, uh, late 80s. Also, Perl is the text parsing king. Perl routinely, you know, you can put Perl on itself and it'll process it. In fact, uh, we've got an intern uh, at Spy, a guy named Nathan, and he was telling me, he was talking with some guys online, and apparently something like 17% of everything you get out of a random number generator, just if you convert it to ASCII text, is valid Perl syntax. It'll execute. I mean, <laughs> I love that. That just is a testament. Test them out to using Perl, right? So I can do anything I want and you know, obfuscate the hell out of Perl, and you're never going to find it. And I can do complex text, text replacement. I got like 10 minutes, don't I? Ooh, all right. I'm going to go faster. OK, so um, if I have known vulnerabilities, I have known applications, right? Because I'm doing SQL injection. If I have known applications, I have known database structures. If I'm injecting vBulletin, I know there's going to be a table for pictures, a table for accounts. So let's start dumping username and passwords to slash dot. I SQL inject you, get all your username and passwords, and then dump that private information to public forums. Because again, I, the holy mother of God, we're screwed. I want to do as much damage as I can as quickly as I can. Now, I'm not advocating this, I'm just saying, this is worst case. Now, or maybe I don't want to. Maybe I want to drop 100,000 tables all around the internet. Just delete. It's going to kind of suck if you're in e-commerce and I just dropped all your orders table. I mean, I just totally screwed your logistics package. Where are your packages going? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'm just going to insert junk into your database. Maybe I just start screwing with FedEx, right? <laughs> you know, uh, don't worry, we use FedEx or whatever the thing is. Well, I'm just going to start making up, you know, FedEx packages. If it's an e-commerce site, I'm just going to start ejecting fictitious orders. A lot of times, simply stealing the information is bad, but sometimes simply corrupting the data can be a heck of a lot worse. Or I've actually seen ploys where people will break into a site, encrypt the person's data, and then ransom it and say, we'll give you the encryption key to get your data back. And normally, it, they just replace the data with random data. Nothing is actually encrypted. Uh, here's the other fun thing. Uh, I'm also going to, Schwagmo is going to start using um, the SMTP libraries of Perl. I'm going to start mail bombing the mailing list that um, the antivirus vendors use and CERT uses and everything. So the people who have to talk and coordinate how to respond to this are dealing with massive email floods. So multiple SQL injections, multiple vendors, and none of them can talk to each other because I'm flooding the, their communication channels. Um, you know, it, how bad would this be? Yeah, improvements, like we should really improve this thing, right? Uh, will vary exactly how much of an impact this has, but uh, suffice it to say, it's gonna generally be very, very bad day to be working in InfoSec if this ever happens. Uh, it pretty, you know, it could be defeated by backups, sure. You know, you could stop the clock, roll everything back, and be okay. Um, Google might be able to implement a filter, uh, but we have multiple search engines. Um, there could have to be a balance between the number of info, uh, uh, hosts that I infect. I mean, I could start the virus with lots of vulnerabilities. I mean, there's a lot you could do here, but to say, suffice it to say, this is all very bad. So 1929 web virus. Let's talk about something with cross-site scripting and Ajax that could destroy the stock market because that's always fun too, and this is very deadly and dangerous. And luckily, E-Trade actually did something about this, and we'll talk about that. So hypothetically, again, none of this is real. I didn't write this. Please don't cart me away. We're going to infect a major stock trading site with cross-site scripting. Maybe it's in some type of customized stock ticker, user portfolio, something like this. The, cr the, the cross-site scripting